Recording started. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dennis Frezzo, and uh, this is the Teaching ICT with Simulations Performance Assessment and Games session. So hopefully you're where you want to be. Um, I uh, work out of uh, Cisco San Jose uh, on the Networking Academy program. Uh, specifically, the group I work with uh, does a lot of software development uh, and educational research. So that will be kind of the flavor uh, of today. And um, we kind of have um, different messages whether you're in the academy already, whether you have the possibility of partnering with the academy, or whether you're just interested in games and research. So it's not just uh, targeted at uh, people that are already uh, affiliated with the academy. Um, my uh, dissertation was on a lot of this work I just finished, um, and the, um, uh, a lot of the work you'll see is very preliminary uh, educational research. Uh, so we're particularly interested in partners to extend the research and uh, see how games especially can help teach uh, ICT. So uh, in terms of things we'll talk about, I um, want to go over uh, the basis of both our performance assessment and our game, uh, which is called Aspire. Uh, the basis of that is a simulation that we've developed over the years called Packet Tracer. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about what characteristics, what aspects, what affordances of Packet Tracer lend themselves particularly to performance assessment um, and also to gaming. Uh, and then I'll uh, go through about 15 slides and then we'll do a demonstration of the game, have plenty of time for questions, and also discuss uh, whether you're an academy, someone who can collaborate with an academy at your uh, institution, or whether just in terms of educational research there's uh, things that you find relevant. Like I said, we're looking for partners. Okay, just a briefest background on the academy. Uh, the uh, focus is, of course, entry-level networking skills education. We have uh, courses ranging from an IT essentials, kind of a basics of computer hardware and software course, through the um, basic TCPIP Ethernet focus of the CCNA certification, to uh, some security, wireless, and advanced technologies like uh, CCNP, Cisco Certified Network Professional level. Um, and we're uh, global reach and we deal with a lot of students per year. So one of the reasons you'll see a lot of detail go into some of the assessment analysis and the game. And one of the reasons we're very interested in large scale, scalable performance assessment and large scale gaming is because we have a lot of students who are basically beginners to medium. Uh, so because we have such a large pool of students that are really focused on pretty similar stuff, uh, it allows us to go way in depth, which is really nice uh, in terms of the, uh, the types of technologies. Um, the students are diverse. Um, the oldest student I heard about last year or two years ago, he was 88 uh, in the academy, and he, uh, they asked him, well, why are you, you, know, you retraining? What are you doing? Um, it's like uh, he just loves to learn. Uh, and the youngest students would be, I guess, uh, 12 and 13, something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, many, many uh, different student aspects. We're very interested in equity of access to them. Hence the simulation, the online performance assessment, and the game are um, something that we feel scales very well to a million, roughly a million students. That's where we're headed per year. Uh, different institutions, diverse institutions. Okay, so some of our inspirations. Um, well, some of you may be familiar with uh, Lego blocks, and Lego, of course, has evolved a lot over the years, and uh, there's a specific product called Mindstorms that's robotics, and uh, the, uh, both the idea that you build models, working models, and then you can have competitions around it, and then they have this uh, really excellent website and kind of a community around it uh, using really now more social networking. Uh, it really is a powerful way to learn programming, learn robotics, learn modeling, uh, and engineering schools use some of this to teach specific courses, uh, but you know you, you can have this in elementary school with the simpler models. So that's a definite inspiration for what we do uh, in the simulation space. Um, another one, 
Uh, those of you familiar with uh, some of the science teaching and uh, aspects, uh, this is a program called Interactive Physics. It's one of many kind of commercially available educational uh, physics simulations. And uh, it lets you do, among other th many other things, you build models of the world, either the physical world, like you could build your own little solar system and give the planets different attributes and see if your solar system's stable or not. Um, you can build different uh, engineered devices like roller coasters. You can also follow this tracing of trajectories. And this was the um, visualization aspect that helped us want to develop uh, a thing called Packet Tracer, where you can visualize packets traveling across the network, just like you can study uh, projectile motion or you know, things like that in physics. So that was another big inspiration. And this is from a much earlier version of Packet Tracer, um, but uh, a first year student in their third or fourth week of class, so their first networking class, obviously very motivated. Uh, the homework assignment was to just talk about how a couple of PCs cabled to a switch would interact. So the very basic things about MAC addresses and how switches learn. And this student, pursuing their inquiry, um, built this whole uh, network, figured out, even though he had, didn't know the rules of IP addressing, kind of copied patterns, figured that all out, and built this wonderful model. Um, I've stayed in touch with him over the years. He's you know, now much further along in his studies and entering a career uh, in networking. So we're really inspired by model builders. That's part of what started us on this path. OK, so Packet Tracer. Um, for those that aren't familiar, just really briefly, uh, you can create your own uh, virtual world. Of uh, These are absolutely modeled devices, so there's no real Cisco operating system inside. Uh, to give you a perspective, Packet Tracer is now, I don't know, 550 to 600,000 lines of code. The real Cisco IOS is in the many, many tens of millions. So this is a very simplified model, but it's good enough for a lot of the basic uh, educational purposes we're serving. So you can drag and drop devices, uh, some routers, some switches, a variety of end devices, uh, interconnect them, configure them, and then you can visualize packet flow. And the current inventory of devices, you can see there's a variety of routers, switches, wireless, more and more end devices as we want to teach that more. And then a growing diversity of protocols. So there's including the basic routing protocols, RIP, PIGRP, OSPF, uh, basic security technologies, uh, increasing range of things that uh, the basic learners um, uh, can interact with. The key thing here is anything that's in the simulator, we can also then do performance assessment on, and we can also build into the game. So this gives us a lot of degrees of freedom to create uh, rich networking oriented uh, game experiences. So that's why we're, we feel so fortunate to have this uh, technology. And this is a recent assignment uh, that was uh, given to instructors actually to uh, allow them to see the different the complexity of the model and actually modeling simple model of an ISP, um, telecommuter, enterprise, uh, some quality of service. And again, it's not primarily a network modeling tool for advanced students of networking. You should use many other tools, including OpNet, for that. But at the level where most of our students are around the world, it's a high enough fidelity model to be very uh, useful educationally um, and hopefully uh, for the game purposes as well. Um, there's a lot of annotation features. So for example, uh, one file, basically, you can translate the GUI. You can put other languages uh, in the annotations as well. There's a way to put in instructions and timers and sort of scaffold the assignments. Um, and then there's a lot of displays to look at different uh, information. And lastly, in Packet Tracer, underneath it, all of the features of the different networking devices um, are basically variables. And then the state of those variables can be tested. And you see here some logical statements. For example, this variable is testing whether uh, R1's connection is correct and R2. And if that's true, they get one point put in that variable, correct, connect, connect correct, excuse me, otherwise zero. So there's this underlying um, assessment architecture built in 
And all of this is available to the instructors. So this activity wizard, this way of crafting simple formative or practice exercises or exams uh, is available. We use this for both the performance assessment and the games. So when you get to the game and we see, well, how do you score the student, it's built into the nature of the underlying simulator to look at everything. And uh, uh, just to give you an example, in a you know, reasonably complex network, let's say one of our seniors, you know, most advanced students would do, you might have uh, five to seven routers and a number of switches and end devices. The number of gradable components of that can quickly become five or 10,000. So you're in a whole different dimension for multiple choice. Not that multiple choice is bad, because for certain types of knowledge and certain types of, types of interactions, multiple choice gives you a great, efficient, scalable way to get data for the student's feedback and for you to score them or place them in the game. But with the power of a simulator now, and all of this is digital, right? All these artifacts can talk to each other and be copied infinitely. Um, we can really get down and say, you know what, your IP addressing skills are really lacking, or you really don't seem to uh, understand the switch, why don't you go back and read this? Or hey, you did great on this, do um, you want a more of a challenge? So all of the things I'm going to say the rest of the presentation kind of go back to this fact that underlying the simulator, there's a ton of data available. Let me pause there. Any comments, questions? Okay, so that's Packet Tracer. That's the simulation basis. Um, so we have an ecosystem, maybe 16,000 instructors around the world. Um, and at the basic level, we've got simulation and the interactions based on that simulation. But we can also, uh, we open up the authoring to the 16,000 instructors, but of course they're very busy. So we have um, approximately 400 activities built in Packet Tracer presented in the curriculum uh, or as just um, extension or enrichment materials. Uh, but uh, instructors using the author interface could change those. They can adapt those uh, uh, activities to their local language, their stories, uh, put in even background images or different um, uh, storytelling uh, aspects, case studies, things like that. Um, but we also use that same authoring interface and assessment interface to write some formal practice exams. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about those performance exams. And then you can also then vary uh, the aspects of the exam so that you can create what's called, we call an isomorph. So two equally difficult problems that look different. Right? So maybe they have different IP address ranges or different device types or names. Things like that. So we're really trying to develop technologies that uh, empower the 16,000 instructors because the, uh, the collective wisdom of the academy instructor community is uh, incredible, it's a wonderful uh, resource for us. Okay, uh, in terms of assessment, um, we have a rather uh, elaborate um, set of uh, aspects to our assessment system because honestly that's very important in educational systems all around the world. It manifests itself differently. Uh, in some places, the assessment system being standardized and online and done by sort of a third party, Cisco, uh, helps the local institutions um, make a more fair, uh, standardized assessment uh, for their students. Uh, other places, adoption is totally dependent on whether the metrics are there to support the program. So over the, the you know, uh, official 12, going on 13 years of the academy program, um, a lot of different assessment technologies have about, uh, emerged. And um, the, the big distinction is between kind of formative practice assessments and summative where you're actually assigning a grade or you're declaring certification or you're doing some sort of uh, gating milestone <laughs> event. And so the, the addition to this, for example, an integral part of the academy will always be hands-on skills because no one wants you know, network technicians, network admins, network engineers that say, oh, I just learned on packet tracing, right? just use the simulator. I had a student recently uh, said, um, you know, why do we have to use the real equipment? You know, the power's off and the last class messed up the cables and, you know, there's all these layer one and layer two problems and I'm like, well, can I just use packet tracing? I said, well, when, when, um, 
when an employer in an interview tells you they're hiring you because of packet tracer, come back and tell me that. Okay. You, can, you can just use packet tracer. You're probably not going to hear that. Uh, you need to know this real world stuff. So we look at the simulation basis as a adjunct um, and division of labor. There's some things you learn best hands on. There's other things that a simulator, for example, visualization does better. Um, so the summative assessments in the academy and, and um, will continue to be grounded and hands-on, but then there's all these other ways. And the, the new way we've introduced over the last year is packet tracer simulator-based assessments to complement the multiple choice assessment. Um, this is just a framework we use to structure assessment. So we, we look at assessment, uh, this is called the four process model. And it's, you can think of it kind of iteratively. So you know, there's sort of a selection of the activity. And that could be done by the student if they're self-learner. right? That can be done by the instructor, which is often the case. Uh, could be done by the system if the system is programmed with enough uh, rules and information gathered about the student. And then there's a kind of a presentation feature. Uh, in our case, we're talking about Packet Tracer presenting an activity that's been pre-authored to them. They do some work in the simulator, and all of those variables are set by their work. And also, we capture a log of their, for example, their command line uh, interface um, work. But then we look at aspects of that work uh, to derive some numbers. And then we make some inferences about, well, what are they competent at? What do they need practice at? So sort of a structured way of looking at different assessments. So we call it the Packet Tracer Skills Assessment System. And um, I won't read all these, but the, the key thing is we can give more complex tasks to the students. For example, design this network from scratch, troubleshoot this large network. You know, someone quit their job and left you with this network kind of in a messy condition. Uh, can you repair it? Um, and the, because it's all simulation based, we can test very large number of students. It's a distributed architecture. Packet Tracer is a locally running application. One resource you find that's uh, very common in the academy is these computers. And it turns out that we did some experiments having a simulator uh, centrally located. But as you can imagine, uh, 700,000 students don't log on at once. But a lot of them do log on at once. And um, if you had every uh, piece of simulation data coming back and forth to us, uh, it's not that interesting to us, you know, every typo and everything like that. And honestly, it works much better to have it distributed using local computing resources. But where the cloud comes in, our servers, is, hey, we can get some data from you. We can benchmark you against other people in the world. Um, and we can give you much better feedback, even like on misconceptions. So right now we're doing research on where do students in the packet tracer exams commonly make mistakes. And then we can, for example, develop more uh, resources around those uh, topics. So it scales really well to have this kind of local running simulator and cloud-based uh, assessment system. Any comments, questions? Yes? I was wondering about the kind of misconceptions and comments and errors and what there is in There are um, two uh, notorious ones in networking are, of course, everything to do with subnetting. So I mean, just a blanket statement, but there's a lot of uh, sub-misconceptions there. Um, also, like uh, placement of access control lists, like where in the network, you know, do they best go? So those would be two that come top of mind. But we're going to look. We're mining these. Uh, in December, we had um, several. What is it? About 10,000 students around the world take one of these performance assessments. So we have 10,000 students worth of log files, and we're looking for patterns in that data. And of course, you also see patterns in your assessment, right? So sometimes the misconception is due to your instructions. Right? You didn't pose the question well, so you can improve your assessment. Other times it's we need to improve the curriculum or the instruction. So it's a really good feed that closes the loop. So just to give you the experience, the student, so first what's not shown in this graphic is the instructor had to activate something. The student launches the exam from a web browser, but they're going to need packet tracer residing on the computer they're using. So whether it's at home, and packet tracer is distributed free to all academy students. So if they're lucky enough to have a computer at home, they can do this whole process from home. 
or from the computer lab or during class. So it doesn't have to be formal learning. It can be informal. So they launch the, the instructor activates it. They launch the assessment. Um, and then the um, Packet Tracer simulator has a uh, API. And um, so we invite people in the community to help us co-develop specific applications. Um, honestly, the network's just getting started and some momentum. But the Packet Tracer locally running on the desktop or the laptop, that uh, is then um, awakened, if you will, by the, the web process sends a message back down and says, I'm going to look for Packet Tracer on your machine. And if I find it, I'm going to go ahead and put a Packet Tracer exam in your Packet Tracer. Go ahead and start working. And then we'll checkpoint you every five minutes so you don't lose work if something happens with the connection. Because connectivity and bandwidth is still a challenge. That's one of the reasons you want most of the simulation work going on locally. And then we just send smaller update packets back. And they take the exam, um, and it could be a couple hours long. Um, and then when they're ready, hit submit. And of course, that, um, that solution network, that final state of their network is compared to the right answer. Um, the log file, which is essentially a transcript of their interactions with the software, all of that is done automatically on the cloud servers. And it goes in the gradebook for the instructor. It goes up automatically. And so conceivably, you could write, this would be, I think, excessive, but just to make a point, you could write, uh, say, 10 router exam for, a, say, a very advanced CCNP student that had 10,000 gradable components, test them for eight hours, and then get this massive proficiency report on where they're strong and where they're weak. That's how scalable it is. In the other direction, you could just make a network consisting of PC connected to a PC connected with a cable and have maybe three gradable components. So in the basic IT essentials course where you're teaching um, basic hardware and software, you could just grade three things. Either way, it scales, it's automatic, teacher gets all his feedback, student gets all his feedback. So um, and our error rate right now in terms of all causes of errors, even though it's partly dependent on the local uh, student's uh, machine, uh, error rate is um, much less than half of a percent. So we're really happy with the reliability. Uh, yes? I have a student. I have a student. I have a student. Yes. Do you have access to the log files to see where they disappoint? Yes. You, 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 yes. Yeah. I'll show, I think I have an example of the log file. Yes. And also, I mean, it's not, it's, it's a, in some places, it's a serious concern, for example, exam security. So these are meant to be practice exams right now because we don't want to make summative exams where big uh, stakes decisions are made until we have the system really debugged, right? Because if you're in the middle of a high stakes exam and we mess up, it's, you know, we don't want to do that. So um, we're headed towards a summative level of reliability, but we're not there yet. Um, but you, from looking at the transcripts, you can see cheating, for example, right? Um, but in a more positive vein, you can really see kind of people's thought process, right? You know, and you can also see um, where um, they're excelling and where they probably need more practice. Okay, so some of the um, data the student gets back is the exam authors define different aspects of proficiency and different standards for it. And again, this is all done by subject matter experts in a pretty systematic process, but it's done by human beings to write the rules. So there's no mystery here. It's all rule-based. Um, and then you can get, and you can see very specifically, oh, I made that cabling connection correct. Maybe I made an IP address wrong. Here's your point. So there's a lot of feedback on how did your points uh, get uh, attained. Um, this is the log file. So you can see I'm um, configuring a switch. They went into config mode, and then they're putting the, uh, setting the telnet line. And you can see, so this person looks pretty linear and logical. Okay. I had to take an exam for a, they're, they're piloting an instructor uh, trainer version of this. And I had to take a form of this exam, pretty difficult, and I'm very rusty. I failed it. And uh, it was very painful to go back and watch my, uh, my log file, but it was very revealing. And you can see where I'm really logical, and then you can see as I've noticed time and I start to panic, and you can see my jumping around devices, trying to maximize my score. So 
it's really interesting feedback for the learner uh, and, of course, for the instructor. And, um, we're looking at automated ways of scoring this, <laughs> looking for patterns. Because, of course, if it's all digital, you know, you write the right rule, you can look for stuff. Um, and then for the instructor, there's more aspects of information about the right answer so that the instructor can control, um, control that. Okay, any questions on what we're doing or comments on an assessment? Okay. Um, so lastly, um, if you've got this simulation basis and you've got this um, um, assessment basis um, and you put those things together, uh, we got very inspired by SimCity and thought about making strategic simulation slash a quest type game about networking and ICT in general really because as, as our program has grown to serve more and more people around the world, we've had to really embrace not just a more narrow focus on ICT or on the networking but a broad focus and we think that's how people should be trained for the future and you know, compliment Pierre and MPIC on all the work they've done locally around trying to decide uh, what the latest, uh, how to express the latest of those skills. So I would say the game is actually really an ICT game uh, and it also has an entrepreneurship emphasis because one of the things we noticed in parts of the world is people are getting these basic networking skills and they're not necessarily valuing them. So for example, in uh, economically underdeveloped parts of southern Italy, uh, which is part of where my family is from and I spend a lot of time over there, I'm a really good friend, uh, they, um, students make money by setting up Linksys type setups in small businesses and things. And so the entrepreneurship uh, curriculum, which is some case studies and then this game, Aspire Game, that entrepreneurship curriculum is called Passport 21, Passport to the 21st Century uh, Skills. Um, and it tries to codify uh, what those students in southern Italy or in Wisconsin or wherever in the world are uh, doing with their networking skills, which is charging for their expertise, uh, starting a business plan, how to deal with the bank, you know, things like this. So that's sort of the flavor of the game and it also gives us an opportunity to pose problems. So it gives us a, a canvas for problem-based learning. You know, so-and-so is trying to set up their doctor's office with wireless. What do you have to think about? Okay. So that's what you'll see here in a minute. Um, so Packet Tracer is the basis of the game. That's the networking simulation core. Um, it's about 700,000 lines of code now uh, the core is C++, but uh, a lot of the game layer is uh, JavaScript. Uh, they have non, nine non-player characters, and six of them are interactive clients, where the client is kind of demanding things of you. Um, in the game right now, there's 24 packet tracer enabled contracts. So there's the equivalent of 24 packet tracer tasks, some of which are um, very simple, could be done in a few minutes, some of which can take a half hour. I think total gameplay can be at least six to eight hours to play all the way through. Um, and of course there's incentives and different timings and things. So if you play faster, you get more points. If you're smart with your money, you get more points. Uh, if you're, um, you know, careless with your money, you get less. Um, so there's what we call web kits done in JavaScript. Uh, so there's business oriented ones and tech oriented ones. We also incorporated Flash for some mini games that we already have. Um, and there's some lessons uh, in the uh, game uh, the, which allows you to, if you don't have a skill, you can uh, look it up. So summary of the game, because we have all the packet tracer devices and protocols, because the uh, game state machines, because we're basically using finite state logic to be different characters in the game, uh, because that's programmable, uh, and because the JavaScript is very easily modified without a lot of coding, um, we anticipate a lot of different variations on this uh, to be possible. So we try to make a game authoring engine, not a one-time uh, game. So let's just look at it. Um, so this is the game board. And it, again, um, inspired, we should be full disclosure, inspired by SimCity. Uh, we were hoping there would be Sim, Sim Network someday. Uh, but I think Will Wright moved on to uh, Spore and bigger, broader things. But um, so that's the, the basic uh, location of the jobs, the contracts, and there are different clients who will ask you to do different things uh, in the workspace. There's a store where 
where all the devices in Packet Tracer are free, right? You just want to build a simulation, you can put 30 routers in there and it's all the same. Here in the game, everything's got cost associated with it, so you start to say, I got to balance software costs, hardware costs, replacement costs, that kind of thing. Um, and then you'll see here, this outside part is actually the simulation, that's the Packet Tracer interface. And so in the configuration mode, to, to play a contract, you actually go into the simulator and do work. And this is the state logic for some of the characters and some of the quests. And yellow means pausing, because the different state machines are not automatically synchronized. It kind of depends on what you chose and what these other entities in the game chose. The uh, uh, blue or purple here is the JavaScript kind of glue like little pop-up boxes to tell you, hey, did you think about this? Or here's another contract. And then the pink are Packet Tracer simulation files. And so you can see that we've got a bit of branching logic here. And when you add a bit of branching logic to different state entities, you can get a lot of different plays. So what we really wanted to avoid was, you know, the students have the same experience every time. So it definitely can be played a few times by one student. And also the whole class, if you play in pairs or play in teams, uh, you get some variation there. And uh, let me pause there. Any questions on the, the game itself? Where did you find the link to it from the system So are you in Academy? Yes. So in the um, uh, course catalog under Passport 21, uh, there will be uh, all the information on downloading it um, and also uh, making it available to your students. Essentially, what you do is you go in your uh, instructor homepage and you can activate it and the students can download it. So we want everybody to have it, play it, um, and, uh, yeah. and it has a version of Packet Tracer inside it. So when you download the whole game, it right now runs just locally. Of course, we want to marry the performance assessment server cloud technology to this and do multiplayer and all that, but honestly, engineering that is a non-trivial uh, yeah, so thank you for appreciating that. Good audience. Um, so we're studying it. Um, this is a piece of uh, software we use. There's um, called Transana. There's others that do the same thing. Uh, so what we do is we study pairs of students, and some of you have been so kind as to uh, lend us students. Um, and we watch them playing the game. So we videotape them facially, um, and we do screen capture on the game. And then we do transcription, which is a horribly boring task, but you learn a lot by how people are thinking. And then we put it all and we code it. And we chunk things down and we say, well, this is where students are having trouble with the UI. So that's something we have to fix. Here's something where the students are having trouble with subnetting. Maybe that's the curriculum, instruction, how they practice. And you can learn a lot. It's very intensive, um, labor-intensive research, but this type of qualitative research really teaches us a lot about uh, how well the software is doing. We also have telemetry. So we tell the students, are you willing to send your uh, anonymous data back so we can analyze it? And these are the contracts. These are different sessions from one student. And it shows which contracts uh, and which uh, subcontracts or smaller tasks they did, how much money they have, the time spent on tasks. And this is a person who's gone quite far through the game uh, quite quickly. Like you can see in session six here, they're going through a lot of different contracts. So we're coupling telemetry with their score. So since it's an entrepreneurship game, we score them on money, reputation, and business sense. And again, that's rules. We as subject matter experts make up rules. Um, what's quite interesting on the videotapes is to see students argue with the characters. Like you didn't pay me enough for that, or you know, <laughs> uh, yes. So your transcription is their verbal. Yes. Feedback. Yes. And right now we're looking broadly, and so not all of it's automated because we wanted to see what we see first, be open to what the data tells us. Later on, we'll want to get uh, less uh, labor. <laughs> um, and then we're grading them on configuration, troubleshooting, and physical labor kind of label layer one, cable link stuff. And we get uh, little reports, for example, at under uh, contract V1C3, we can actually probe work product features like the uh, IP address they put on PC3 is this. And so there, what we see coming together is what you call curriculum, what you call assessment, and what you call a game. Let's make all that talk to each other for those learners that learn well with games. Not all people 
learn well with games, and right now the game's only in English. We're trying to make it very translation friendly, uh, but on, you know, with limited resources you do kind of sizable chunks of things at a time. But we want to have a curriculum assessment gaming experience for students that uh, uses all this digital feedback. Okay, I'm going to just go over uh, how to stay in touch and then just finish with a quick demo of a bit of the game. Um, so if you're at an academy, if you go to the course catalog, you know, as an instructor and admin, uh, you'll see Cisco Packet Tracer. Under assessment, you'll see PTSA, Cisco Packet Tracer um, Skills Assessment. And you'll see Passport 21, which will have the Aspire game. If you're not an academy, but you're at a site that uh, school or you're related to an institution, or you just have a friend at an institution that is an academy, um, we have made case-by-case -case, um, arrangements where, for example, the business department at a school really liked the entrepreneurship part, and they didn't mind that the people learned some basic networking, like how to get your wireless up and running, or you know how to set an IP address on one device. Um, so those type of arrangements can be made uh, if it's not an academy. And then if you're interested in doing the research, um, I'll make this available, um, but uh, this is our uh, research collaborative site. So anybody that's trying to do a master's or a dissertation or just interested in publishing academic type research on education, we've got a lot of students and a lot of data, far more than we can even begin to analyze. So there's a lot of opportunities to partner research-wise. Um, we're working with the National Academy of Sciences on uh, this general question of games and education. Um, this is the dissertation work on packet tracer specifically. So if you're interested in simulations, that's uh, online. Um, this is an article we wrote about kind of the integration of these three. And we're actually on Facebook. Now you can't get the game through Facebook now because right now it's kind of an academy only pilot. Uh, but of course we are taking case by case partnering people with academy. Uh, but you can see a little bit of the, the growing, still small, but interesting buzz and, and feedback. Uh, in the social space. So let me finish with just showing you a tiny bit of the game. And um, it's just some references there. Let's go over to Spire. And we'll play a new game. And we'll start the game. And it does have music and sound effects, which I usually suppress because either the Mac gets angry at the VMware and the Windows, or the uh, collaboration software gets records more than we wanted. So, um. yes, please. Um, so, for example, if you're teaching um, the, uh, the yes. The uh, not discovery, exploration one or discovery one? Yeah, exploration one. It, would the students in within that course have to have to ah, So the targeted technical level for this, we have this, we designed this like we design an assessment. So if those of you who are in the academy are familiar, there's these long assessment design documents that go with every assessment. There's several for this. Um, it's targeted discovery one and two. So if you have discovery two level of skills, you probably can get all the way through the game. Big caveat. What we found is because of the shift to problem-based learning, we need to do a much better job, starting with us at Cisco, of preparing people for problem-based learning. So if I've watched exploration students have great difficulty here, not because they're not bright or not well taught, but this is now transfer, right, to problems and so you got to read the instructions and as in real life sometimes the instructions are a little ambiguous and uh, that leads to arguing with characters in the game, um, especially when the pay isn't right. Um, so um, the, the problem based nature of it I think makes it interesting even for exploration for students and the very first couple of contracts we've had people do that had no background in anything IT at Cisco and they said, and this is totally anecdotal, so the scientist in me says, probably shouldn't even say this, but the uh, marketing in me says, go ahead. Um, we have had people that are, uh, you know, of younger generation than me, certainly, uh, and they, um, they've expressed, um, especially some females, you know, if I had something like this, this would have been, I'm much more interested in IT. 
uh, and they did just the first contract, which is buying four PCs and placing them. And then the second contract is a little bit of wireless or IP configuration. So even in the beginning classes, I think you could safely um, use without frustration, um, and Maria is going to get very mad at me. For, she's, she's eager. Um, you could use this, but you have to scaffold it and say, there's going to be a point where you, you may get stuck. But I think it's pretty broad right now. Sure. And so I'm going to answer Marie's, Maria's question. Okay. Um, so she wants help with the Internet Cafe. So in general, it's good to say yes to Maria in this game. Okay. And then uh, just looking around the town, C means there's a contract available. So that's where I'm going to go to meet Maria and learn about um, the details of the contract. This is the store. And there's a shop assistant there. And again, uh, most of the things that are in Packet Tracer plus uh, some additional things that we added for just the game, for example, um, if you earn uh, money, you can waste it on luxury <laughs> items. Um, you get kind of docked in your business sense if you start trying to buy the sports car you know, when you only have 3,000 credits. Um, but, um, and there's a, so we're starting to model the broader things about software installation so that it's not just network layer 3 or 2, it's, you know, ICT professional, what do you do? Um, with it. Um, and so let's just jump back to the city view here. And uh, this is the learning center. So there are free tutorials in here. And they're also, um, you pay 50 credits and you can learn to do things that you might need to do in the game. And so we're toying with the idea of building a pilot. It's very provisional right now and preliminary where the, the course is the game, right? So you're at the, the game presents you a set of problems and then all of this takes you to places in what's essentially a curricula. Not for everybody, but it does, I think this problem-based thing is a big deal and we need to do a better job starting with us, uh, us on it. Um, and let's see, here's my house. And you'll see my house is not well furnished. Okay. I'm loyal to Cisco, but I don't own anything yet. So. And uh, my goal maybe is to get the car in that driveway. But um, it's far off. And then uh, this is the bank. And you can, from the start of the um, uh, game, you can take loans. But of course, uh, your business sense may suffer, right? Is a loan really needed before I even know what my first uh, task is? So I'm going to skip that. And um, let's go ahead and see what Maria wants. And um, it's a 3,000 credit contract. Why don't I go ahead and take it? And you can, you can pass on things and you'll get other opportunities sometimes. Um, and so basically Maria wants me to go to the store, get four PCs and put them. She's trying to run this small business where she's running a laundromat and a little you know, cafe area. And she wants to set up a little uh, computer access and then maybe a network to help uh, you know, get more value to her customers. Um, so I'm going to go to the store and I need to buy. Uh, so notice she spotted me 3,000 credits. So I'm on the hook to get something done here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and buy some uh, PCs. And I'm going to, she mentioned something about being economical. So I'm going to do uh, four refurbished. But she also mentioned something about reliability or I should think about warranties. So I'm going to go ahead and buy some maintenance contracts because you know, maybe these computers are a little suspicious. We have a, a, a state uh, uh, that allows us to inject problems. So we can, this doesn't have much use of it, but we can, for example, bring down links. Uh, you pretend to be a backhoe taking away a cable. Um, bring devices down so that you can have uh, unforeseen things you have to respond to uh, in the game. And um, okay, so let's go back and the final part of the demo is just let's go place the computers back in the, um, uh, you'll notice I got green feedback here. I did those tasks. For harder tasks, we may not give you so many hints. Um, so this is the, the first task and the beginner's task. Oh, and Judy Jones was added to my contacts. I may want to call her later. Uh, if I look at uh, my contact list, I could get, probably get some more business that way. Um, and so let's go and go ahead and configure. And you'll see Packet Tracer comes up. And I need to, you'll notice now, I don't get the devices for free, but I bought four of them. So I'm going to place them and try and make Maria happy. Uh, and see, she's responding. She noticed um, my work. And uh, let's put two more here. Okay. And 
notice I got green for that. However, remember I also bought the uh, warranty. And so on software and services here, I'm going to go ahead and activate that because I bought that too. And so that should give me some more points, right? Because I was a good uh, small business installer and I uh, gave the customer what she asked for and what's prudent. It is a new tab. So just in the game, this will be eventually available in Packet Tracer. So what we're doing is co-evolving the three tools. Packet Tracer, the skills assessment, and the game all trying to push forward and help each other. Very astute uh, observation. Um, and this is still the full simulator. And so again, as I showed earlier, um, we can make a game out of just one PC and configuring it, or we can make it 30 routers and give you eight hours. Uh, and I think it's, you know, we can see what you did and tell you, hey, here's how to get better. So um, let's see, last thing. Um, I can get information about how I'm doing. Um, I can see my different proficiencies. Again, these were defined by rules, and they're kind of published in the help so that people can see how you do better or worse on them. Um, there's special challenges that come up called badge quests. Um, and then you have your manager inventory. And you remember, I only put one maintenance contract active. I've still got three that I bought. So um, with that, uh, I really thank you for your attention, and we really want collaborators and feedback. So um, I'll take over. We got two minutes for questions. Yes. I, I was curious um, if there are resources. If you have a suggestion for how we do scaffolding for this, like for example, how would a pe how would a student playing this game know to look on that configuration tab on the PC to add a service contract? So the, the couple of scaffolding things on the business end, and I've found that it really depends on your student population um, whether they need the business case studies. But there's a, if you go in the Cisco uh, instructor site under Cisco Passport 21, there's seven chapter size case studies about business that helps answer some of these. So that's one form of scaffolding. It's anticipated that they're in some ICT course. Right, that's another. So you can point them, for example, particularly well connected to discovery but also to ITE, IT Essentials, or the uh, exploration courses. And in-game, in the learning, so when you first log in the game, you have to kind of watch a short video that sensitizes you to the UI, and then there's a lot of help. So I think if they're enrolled in a course, and you're scaffolding them, and then you say, look, here's in the game, I would point out where in the game they can get the help. Most people can get, even the, say, early D1 students, if they're motivated, we found it's interesting that some people do learn well this way, like new stuff, because they have to for the game. And then other people we found are, you know, not gamers. But yeah, that's how I recommend. Yes, John. You know, one thing that's on one of these games are really good, not only in the classroom environment, but they're really good way to improve students from high school and various components. And I'm just wondering, what are the licensing, what are the agreements? Or the other games that you use, like the Peter Pack, uh, Peter Pack and some of the other um, arcade style games, are, are they freely available for anyone to use? Or what's the feel like? So I'm going to defer right back to John. But uh, <laughs> um, the <laughs> In general, um, right now, derivative works like, you know, you, you make a promo for your academy that shows some of this, that's fine. But the distribution is generally intended to academy students. Um, but what we're looking for, and especially in the <coughs> research partnerships, is, um, you know, case by case, is there a situation where, and generally you work with the, you know, your TM and your AM and get permission. Well, Submit it through the, the, the chain. And it usually go back to, if it's anything Packet Tracer, PTSA, or game related, it'll go to uh, ESOC, you know ESOC. Um, but in general, it's, it's, and this is a, well, as you know, uh, that's the best way to handle it. Okay, well, please.